Using the standard enthalpy of formation and Hess's law, we can get a nice straightforward way to uh, calculate the reaction enthalpy for a given reaction. So we have this reaction here where the small uh, lowercase letters represent number of moles and the uppercase letters re represent specific compounds. So our reactants are capital A and capital B. Our products are capital C and capital D. And they have uh, as many moles of them as their lowercase letter that precedes them. So we know from Hess's law that it doesn't matter how we get to from the reactants to the products as long as we do because enthalpy is a state function. So as long as that's the net result, then we can get there. So instead of doing this path, how about we take A and B and we break them down to their elements and their standard states. Then we take those elements and we put, make those elements uh, return to uh, the atoms which are the products. So we can make A and B go to the elements which make up A and B and then take those elements and form C and D from them. So what is the enthalpy that is uh, created in this step? Well, we're, instead of going from elements to molecules, we're going from molecules to elements. So this is the negative of the standard enthalpy of formation for A and B. So I'm going to kind of do my Hess's law formula here for my enthalpy of reaction. I'm going to sum these two things up here. So the first thing I'm going to say is I have minus A enthalpy of formation. Make want to make that delta H. Delta F H naught of A minus B moles times delta F H naught for B. <coughs> okay, so that's the enthalpy of this step here. And then I want to take those elements and form C and D. So that's equivalent to saying uh, the enthalpy of formation of C moles of C and D moles of D. So that will be plus C times enthalpy of formation of C plus D times enthalpy of formation of compound D. So we have, what we have here is the enthalpy of formation of the products minus the enthalpy of formation of reactants. So it's still just products minus reactants. And we, all we did was kind of do this hypothetical intermediate step here where we took them and made their elements and then reformed the products. So because of Hess's law, this works. So if we know what the enthalpy of formation are for all the compounds in our reaction, then we can just calculate what the enthalpy of our reaction is from that. So let's uh, formalize this further. <clears throat> if we have some hypothetical reaction where we have a set of I products, I, Ni moles of each of them, of product of reactant I, I should say, we have I set of I reactants. And then we have a set of J products, NJ moles of each compound J, then the enthalpy of this reaction is going to be sum over J, that coefficient again, formation enthalpy of compound J, minus summing over all of the reactants, their stoichiometric coefficient, Ni, times the enthalpy of formation of compound I. So let's do a quick example here before we go. Let's list out the enthalpy of formation for some compounds here, which are going to take place uh, over the course of a reaction. Our reaction is going to be the combustion of glucose. So we have glucose there, starts as a solid, and you add in six moles of oxygen gas, and the result of this combustion reaction will be six moles of liquid water plus six moles of CO2, car carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so let's list the enthalpy of formation for all these compounds. O2 is an element in its standard state, so that's zero. I just reversed that there. Zero, 
for O2 gas. For liquid water from H2 gas and a half mole of oxygen, uh, oh, half mole of O2, minus 285.8 kilojoules per mole. For CO2 gas from one mole of solid carbon and one mole of O2 gas, it's going to be minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And finally, we have glucose, which we did as the example from the previous video, C6H12O6 solid. It's crystalline. It's going to be minus 1271 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so let's calculate the enthalpy for this reaction. So the enthalpy of this reaction is going to be 6 moles of H2O times minus 285.8 enthalpy of formation plus 6 moles of CO2 times minus 393.5 uh, enthalpy kilojoules per mole enthalpy of formation minus 6 moles of O2 times its enthalpy of formation 0 minus our 1 mole of glucose at minus 1271 uh, enthalpy of formation for glucose. So that gives us our final result that the delta H of reaction for this combustion of glucose is going to be very, very exothermic at minus 28.5 kilojoules per mole. And we know that combustions should generally be very exothermic because they're, you know, things setting on fire. They're releasing a lot of heat to the atmosphere around us. So this is uh, usually the most straightforward way to calculate the enthalpy of reaction is just to find from some table uh, the st uh, standard enthalpy of formation of every compound involved and then do the appropriate multiplications times their stoichiometric coefficients, remembering whether each is a product with a positive sign or a reactant with a negative sign, and then getting our final result for that enthalpy of reaction.